welcome everyone. Today, Kushbu and I are going to conclude our reading of the Bhagavad Gita. And so we look forward to your comments on the whole process that we have completed over the last five months, almost six months now, five months. And we hope that it's meaningful to you. And so we're going to begin with the last verse from last re- the last reading, which is verse 64. We're reading Discourse 18, verses 64 to 78. Verse 64. Sarva gruhaya tama buyaha kshunu me parama vacha. Ishto dasi me dadhya miti tato vakshayami te hitam. Slok 64. I'm reading from the Bhagavad Gita translated by Laurie Patton, uh, which is the Penguin classic. I'm reading from the Light Illuminations Bhagavad Gita translated by Sri Purohit Swami, annotated by Kendra Cross and Burroughs. And I'm reading from Bhagavad Gita translated by R.K. Sharma and uh, with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan, uh, which is the gold standard of the Bhagavad Gita containing not only the English, but also the Devangadi in uh, script and in uh, transliteration and translations of every word in the Bhagavad Gita. Verse 64. Even further, listen to my highest word, the most hidden of all. You are greatly loved by me, so I will speak for your benefit. The prose reads, Only listen once more to my last word, the deepest secret of all. You are beloved by me, you are my friend, and I speak for your welfare. And the Sharma reads, listen again to my supreme teaching, the most secret of all. You are my inseparable beloved one. Therefore, I will speak what is in your best interest. Slok 65. 65 and 66. Okay. Man mana bhava mandra tatko madhyanji ma Namaskuru Ma me veshyasi Satya te Pratijani Priyodasi me Sarva dharma Napari tyaja Ma menka Sarana Vraja Aha twa Sarva papemyo Moksha Yishyami Ma sucha Slok 65 and 66. The patent reads, Devoted to me, keep your mind intent on me. Give honor to me and sacrifice to me. In this way you will truly go to me, I promise, for you are my beloved. Letting go of all dharmas, take me alone as your place of rest. And do not grieve, because I will free you from all evils. The prose reads, Dedicate yourself to me, worship me, sacrifice all for me. Prostrate yourself before me, and to me you shall surely come. Truly do I pledge to you, you are my own beloved. Give up then your earthly duties, surrender yourself to me only. Do not be anxious. I will absolve you from all sin. And there's a footnote. Up until now, Krishna has been emphasizing the importance of doing one's duty according to the principles of karma yoga. Now, however, the Gita reveals that it is possible to dispense with such disciplines and follow a direct path to God through love, obedience, and surrender. In Sri Aurobindo's paraphrase, 
all this personal effort and self-discipline will not in the end be needed. All following and limitation of rule and dharma can at last be thrown away as hampering encumbrances. If thou canst make a complete surrender to me, I repeat the absolute assurance, the infallible promise that I will lead thee to myself through and beyond all sorrow and evil. What does surrender imply? Yogananda suggests some meanings of this line. Always keep your consciousness in my sheltering presence. Remember me alone and withdraw into the shelter of oneness with me. And the Sharma reads, with mind on me, be devoted to me, sacrificing to me, offer salutations to me. Thus you will come to me alone. I promise this truly to you. You are dear to me. Relinquishing all dharmas, take shelter in me alone. I will liberate you from all sins. Don't worry. Slok 67. Ida, te, nata, paskaya, nabhakaya, kadachana, na, chashu, shu, shve, vachyam, na, cha, ma, odavya, suyati. Slok 67. The pattern reads. This should never be spoken by you to one who lacks the heat of discipline or who is not devoted to me or who does not want to hear what is to be said or who sneers at me. The prose reads, speak not this to one who has not practiced austerities or to him who does not love or who will not listen or who mocks. And the Sharma reads, Slok 67. This must never be spoken of by you to anyone who does not practice austerities, nor to one without devotion, nor to one who does not want to listen, nor to one who speaks ill of me. Slok 68. 68 and 69. Okay. Ya, Ima, Parama, Grumhya, Madateshvabhidhasyayeti Bhangti Mai Para Krutva Mame Veshyatya Sanshayaha Na Cha Tasmanamu Nashyeshu Kanshi Name Priya Krutamaha Bhavita Na cha me tasma danyaha priyataro bhuvi. Slok 68 and 69. The pattern reads The one who sets forth this highest hidden truth to those who are devoted to me and has shown the highest love for me will without doubt go to me. No one among all humankind will give more love to me. And there will be no other on earth dearer to me than that one. The prose reads, But he who teaches this great secret to my devotees, his is the highest devotion, and verily he shall come unto me. Nor is there among many any who can perform a service dearer to me than this, or any man on earth more beloved by me than he. The Sharma reads, One who will impart this supreme secret teaching to my devotees, having rendered absolute devotion to me, will come to me alone without doubt. And among people, no one does more pleasing service for me than him, nor will there be another on earth dearer to me than him. Slok 70. 70, 71. Okay. Udhye shyate cha ya ima dhanya 
संवाद मां बयो हो ज्ञानीय ज्ञेत तेना हमिष्ट सैमिति में मति ही श्रद्धावान नसूयश क्षुणु या दपि यो नर सोदपि मुंगतक सुभा लोकान पा प्रणु यात्पो अन्य कर्म पाणम श्लोक 7071 the patent reads and my thought is this one who learns and recites this conversation of ours so filled with dharma would sacrifice to me with the sacrifice of knowledge and also one who would hear without sneering full of trust would be freed and would reach those happy worlds where actions are pure the prose reads he who will study the spiritual discourse of ours i assure you he shall thereby worship me at the altar of wisdom yea he who listens to it with faith and without doubt even he freed from evil shall rise to the worlds which the virtuous attain through righteous deeds and the sharma reads and one who shall study this righteous dialogue of ours i will be worshiped by him with a ritual offering consisting of knowledge this is my view and there's a footnote for the meaning of janana yajna c verses 433 and 915 even by listening a person full of faith not disrespectful he also being liberated would attain the auspicious worlds of those who do meritorious acts and there's a footnote compare verse 331 श्लोक 72 72 एंड 73 कर कर्ची देत छुतम पार्थ त्वये काग्रेण चेतसा कर करती द ज्ञान सम्मोह प्रण स्तस्ते धनंजय अर्जुन उचा नष्टो मोह स्मृति लर्बधा त्व तप्रा सादान्म या च्युत स्थितो दस्मी गत संदे अह करिश्ये वचन तव स्लोक 72 73 Son of Prita, have you listened to this with focused thought? Have your ignorance and confusion been taken away, winner of wealth? Arjuna said, "Unfailing Krishna, through your grace I have gained wise memory and lost delusion. I stand here with my doubt gone. I will do what you say." O oh, Arjuna, have you listened attentively to my words? have your ignorance and your delusion gone arjuna replied my lord o immutable one my delusion has fled by your grace o changeless one the light has dawned my doubts are gone and i stand before you ready to do your will the sharma reads have you heard this with contained mind o son of prita Has your delusion due to ignorance been thoroughly destroyed a winner of wealth there's a footnote until now arjuna has been asking questions here krishna asks if arjuna has truly understood the teaching arjuna said my delusion is destroyed and my memory is restored through your grace o imperishable one i stand firm doubts gone I will abide by your word. And there's a footnote. The dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna concludes with this verse. 
Arjuna has gained wisdom and is without egoism. Now he just says, I will abide by your word. Unlike the egotism he showed in verse 2.9, by saying, I will not fight, he is now ready to surrender his will to God. Slok 74. Yeah, just, just, just. From 74 till the end of it, it's, it's together. Okay. 78. And then there is a, in the end, there is something written called 18. So after you finish the translation, I will just read that one line, which is in the end. Okay. Um, Sanjay Uchava. Ityaha Vasudevasya Parthasva Cha Mahatmana Savad Mima Ma Shroshama Dan Bhuta Roma Roma Harsha Ram Vyasa Prasadachu Tavani Tadu Hantya Maham Parama Yoga Yogeshwara the Krishna the Sakshat Katha Yataha Swayam Rajan Sansmrutya Sansmrutya Savada Mimama the Mutama Keshava Jurnayo Punya Rashyami Cha Muhu Muhuaha Takcha Sansmrutya Sansmrutya Rupama Tya Da Bhunta Hare Vismayo Ne Mahanara Janha Shyami Cha Punaha Punaha Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Partho Dhanu Dhar Dhanu Dharaha Tatra Shri Vijayo Bhurti Dhruva Niti Mar Titarma Slok 74 to 78. So recall now that the entire Bhagavad Gita is actually a story being told by Sanjaya to his king. And so this is the conclusion. The pattern reads, Sanjaya said, Thus I have heard the conversation between the son of Vasudeva and the son of Prita, whose nature is great. It was miraculous, sorry. It was miraculous and caused my hair to stand on end. By the grace of Vyasa, by the grace of Vyasa, the composer, I have heard this highest hidden yoga from Krishna, Lord of Yoga, speaking himself right before my eyes. King remembering continually King remembering continually this miraculous and sacred dialogue between Arjuna, between Arjuna and the lovely haired Krishna, I rejoice again and again. King remembering again and again the miraculous form of Hari, my wonder is great and I rejoice again and again. This is my thought whenever there is Krishna the Lord of Yoga, wherever there is Arjuna, son of Prita, bearing his bow, there will always be splendor, victory, well-being, and wise conduct. The prose reads, Thus have I heard this rare, wonderful, and soul-stirring discourse of the Lord Sri Krishna and the great soul of Arjuna. Through through the blessing of the sage Vyasa, I listen to the secret and noble science from the lips of the master, the Lord Sri Krishna. King, 
the more I think of that marvelous and holy discourse, the more I lose myself in joy. As memory recalls, as memory recalls again and again. Sorry. As memory recalls again and again the exceeding beauty of the Lord, I am filled with amazement and happiness. Wherever is, wherever is the Lord Sri Krishna, the Prince of Wisdom, and wherever is Arjuna, the great archer, I am more than convinced that good fortune, victory, happiness, and righteousness will follow. And there's a footnote. Mayor Baba said, everything in the Gita is expressed in these few lines by a Western mystic. What is it? Let it go. <laughs> uh, very moving for me. So, what is it? You have to be patient with me, Kushbu. It's sure, very, sure. It's, it's very moving for me, and and I'm asking, what is moving you? <sighs> it would be nice for the audience to hear. Let them cry with you at least. <laughs> Akushbu, there is so much wrapped up in this reading that I cannot begin to say, uh, not the loot. Not the least of which has not the least of which has been the privilege of reading it with you. But there's too much, there's too much wrapped up in my own life, which I will describe uh, later on in a closing video. But I do want to read this, um, these words from a Western mystic. Meyer Baba said, everything in the Gita is expressed in these few lines by the Western mystic. By the Western mystic. Quote, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall, it shall, sorry, I'm just a mess. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself, and I will be ever only all for thee. This is from a hymn by Francis Ridley Havergal, written in 18, written in 1874. And the Sharma reads, 
Sanjaya said. Thus I heard this wonderful, thrilling dialogue between Vasudeva Krishna and the great souled son of Prita. And there's a footnote. With this verse, we return to the conversation between King Drashtra, Dratarashtra, and Samjaya that began in verse 1.2. Samjaya's response to the hearing, Sanjaya's responses to hearing the conversation are contained in these last verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Verse 75, by the grace of Vyasa, I have heard this supreme secret, the science of yoga, from the Lord of yoga, from Krishna himself speaking directly. O King Drashtarashtra, by recalling over and over this wonderful holy dialogue of Kesava, Krishna, and Arjuna, I am thrilled again and again. And recalling over and over that immensely astonishing from and recalling over and over that emit <clears throat> sorry and recalling over and over that immensely astonishing form of Hari Krishna, my amazement is great, and I am thrilled again and again, O King Dratarashtra. There's a footnote. For Krishna's manifestation as Visvarupa, Visvarupa, see verse 11.13. Then the son of Pandu saw the entire universe divided in many forms, located in one place within the body of the God of Gods. Whenever Krishna, the Lord of Yoga, Wherever, wherever Krishna, the Lord of Yoga, and wherever is the son of Prita, and wherever is the wherever Krishna, wherever is Krishna, the Lord of Yoga, and wherever is the son of Prita, the arch. There exists prosperity, victory, well-being, and stable righteousness. This is my sincere opinion. And the Kalafan reads, here ends the 18th chapter. Here ends the 18th chapter named the Yoga of Liberation by Renunciation in the Upanishads sung by Sri in the Upanishads sung by Lord Sri Krishna in the dialogue. In the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in this in the what in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the scripture of yoga pertaining to knowledge about Brahman found in the Mahabharata consisting of 100,000 verses composed by Vyasa in the section called Bhishma Parvan. So that's very moving for me, uh, Kushbu and all. I think I should read this other thing that I have here, just so you understand uh, why this is so moving for me, uh, or one of the reasons. There are so many reasons that could not be told. When I was a senior in high school in December of 1963, I was uh, I participated in a one-act one play, which was entered in a one-act play contest. Um, the contest was between 
all of the American schools on the Kanto plane. In Japan, there were eight of them. So there were eight plays. And I won the Best Actor Award for that particular performance. And this play was um, about a king, an emperor, who had a daughter. It was a play that was designed to connect Christianity with Japanese tradition. Uh, and in this play, um, the emperor, I'm sorry, the daughter has a vision that the star that they're seeing in the heavens, which is the star of Bethlehem, should be followed by her father to give gifts to the newly born Christ child. And um, the role I played was that of the advisor to the king. And so, and I suddenly had a vision the other day as I was reading all this, that um, this play really was also a version of the Bhagavad Gita with the emperor playing Arjuna and me playing Krishna. Um, and so the other day, um, I suddenly had that realization uh, So the other day I had the, that realization and um, suddenly the closing, the closing line, the closing lines of the play uh, came back to me in a rush. And so the one act play had ended and I had one more. Sp I had one more speech to give. And so I came out on the on the stage and I had a fan in my hand. Japanese style fan. I was dressed as a samurai, samurai warrior. Um, and I complete with a wig so that I looked like I had a pate like a samurai, and so on. And uh, so I opened the fan, held it up. And this is the speech that I was that I gave. which all came back to me. And how many years is this? It's 57 years ago and it all came back. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the moon shine bright to issue you safe journey. May the moon shine bright to issue you safe journey home. May the star of Bethlehem grant you peace in this world and happiness in the next. So anyway, so you see that um, huge parts of my life came, came together in this reading um, and when I studied the Bhagavad Gita the first time 50 years ago, um, I was obviously not mature enough to understand what it meant. I don't even, I don't even actually remember reading it at all. I remembered it was mentioned in my Oriental religions philosophy class. 
Um, but um, what I can, can say, and which you know, is that since May the 9th, or even before that, since April, um, when Ashok Bedi spoke to us about the Bhagavad Gita and the appearance of um, Vishnu, um, I have been having an ongoing numinous experience with this book, and I had never read it cover to cover, and now I've read it on film three times. So uh, I thank you for being my partner. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Is there a is there an end note and a slok saying number eighteen in any any of your? Ah uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. In uh, in the in uh, the prose version that it it says, "May the Lord Sri Krishna bless you." All right. So let me let me read what I have, and I I will also read the English translation of it. Okay. And we can. Terrific. And we can end this because I have it here. Iti moksha san sanyasa yogo namashta dasoda dhyayaha. So ends the Bhagavad Gita. May the Lord of Love enshrined in the heart of all inspire every one of us to live to make our world a land of peace and a joy love and wisdom om shanti 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 hi om shanti shanti hi shanti hi god bless you this has been a long endeavor hard work god bless you for that god bless you for that thank you uh and so now we leave you uh, to your own thoughts about the bhagavad gita and uh, you can find the link to the beginning of this reading that kushbu and i began on may the 10th 2020 in the description of this video Thank you again, Kushbu. Good night. And uh, also, the, there will be just a, a very short uh, session, uh, which which you can you can call it passage for a meditation upon Bhagavad Gita's teachings, and uh, which will be a a small poem. Um, say, be aware of me always. And one other, one other thing I, I do want to say is um, special thanks to uh, Les Morgan, who was the was one of the participants in the Bhagavad Gita, translated by R. K. Sharma, uh, who was also written the readers guide to the Bhagavad Gita for his guidance in this project. Special thanks. Good night, Krish Kushbu. Peace. Good night. Good night. Peace. Good night.